Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making a fish roll. Guys, I would appreciate it very much if you could subscribe to my channel and follow me on this journey. I'm trying to make content which everybody can subscribe to, follow along with and able to create themselves. Okay, without further ado, we're going to be using bass. Bass that's already been filleted and boned. We're going to also be using mackerel. Mackerel that's been smoked. And it's got a lot of salt in it because of the smoking effect, okay? That's why we're not going to be using any salt. So we've got here, we got our Italian seasoning, and we've got our paprika, and we've got Maggi. Those are all we're going to be using. The Italian seasoning is for fish, fish-based only. So if you can get that, that would be great. If you can't get that, use celery, celery salt, or celery seasoning. That's the other way that you can add more flavor to this dish okay and then let's get on to our vegetables our vegetables are onions and potato and carrot and yes garlic i use garlic in everything that i cook okay so we're going to clean this up chop it up and dice it and then we got our cheats this carrot is for a charcuterie board or dipping in a hummus by itself it's already cleaned it's already good to go so all you just need to do is dice it okay and then we have our pastry here short bought pastry okay i don't know how to make pastry sometimes i get confused with measurements and all of that okay so we buy it from the shop i like to use short uh, short crust pastry rather than puff pastry to make this okay when you're going to use this take this out at least an hour before you need it so it can become room temperature and it can be soft and you can then be able to work with it then we have our one egg, one egg that we're going to beat and we're going to use it to glaze our fish roll. OK, that's all our ingredients that we're going to use today. So, guys, continue to stick around and let's see what we can create. Hey, guys. So we're chopping up our onion. And then we've got our carrots chopped and our potatoes chopped. We want to cut them at the same size, a nice equal size so that they cook evenly throughout and then we've got our garlic chopped up as well and then we're going to add oil to the pan and we're going to start frying so i've got my olive oil in here i know it says jack daniel but remember this is how i store my oil on my table so we've got our olive oil in here we're going to add it to a nice warm pan okay guys remember to keep the pan at a medium heat we don't want our garlic to burn because garlic tends to burn very very quickly okay remember we're gonna fry our fish in here everything is going into one fish takes a few minutes to fry and to cook through okay so let's go so we've got our garlic in there and then we're going to go in with our onion. We're going to sweat it down. And then we're going to come in and add our carrots and our potato. Okay. Everything needs to be added in one at a time. Okay. Oh, So guys, we sweated our, our onions nicely. And now we're going to add our carrots. Carrots go in. It all together, and then we're gonna add our potato, and that gets stirred in together. We stir this together and allow this to cook down just for a few minutes. Then we can add our seasoning. Okay. Okay, guys, we've added our carrot, our potato, our onion and our garlic into this okay you want to keep an eye on it because you don't want it to get too brown can you see that one sneaking in there that one's a bit brown okay so now we're gonna add in our ingredients into this dish so guys we're gonna add our seasoning that's our seafood seasoning fish seasoning if you don't have that as i said you can always use like vegetable stock or get celery salt and then we've got our Maggie. Everything is going to go in. So that's one teaspoon. Tablespoon. <laughs> well, that's one tablespoon. And this is one cube of Maggie. That's going into this. So all of that is mixed into there. Let's 
to mix it up. You could smell the, I can smell the celery from the seafood seasoning. I can smell the maggie. And as I said before, no, we're not going to add salt. There's no need. Remember that our fish still has to go in there and that's our mackerel. Okay. So that now, what we're going to do, we're going to cut up our bass. So we can put it into the frying pan and then we're going to cover everything and allow it to cook over time. So guys, we've chopped up our bass. It's going to go in the pan with our vegetable and our seasoning. This has been on the fire for about, I'd say, less than five minutes. So I'm hoping the cooking time should be about half an hour. The last give and take, <laughs> but I'll let you know at the bottom of the description. Okay, so now the fish is in there. We're gonna put a lid on this and let this cook and come back to it. Remember, we still need to add in our mackerel, but that's gonna be at the last minute as well as our paprika because everything else is practically cooked. Okay, all right, okay. As you can see, that fish has turned from pink to white. You can tell that it's cooking away nicely. Remember, it's a fish pie, so the fish has to be crumbled in there. So everything is still cooking nicely. The fish still is going to take a bit more time to cook. Yeah, because I left it at a very low heat when I should have put it a bit higher. Right. So at the same time, the potato is cooking, you see, can you see the potato is starting to get soft, but it still needs time, so everybody's cooking at the same rate. Mm. So, remember that we've got our macro, I've crunch, uh, scattered it, forked it out, taking off the skin at the back, and it's going to go in here now. All right. You may think to yourself, that's not a lot of fish in there. The thing is, I don't today. You just want to have some flavor of fish and see the fish, but you don't want to be overwhelmed that it's just fish, that there's nothing else inside your fish roll. Okay, so but here we go. I'm gonna go back to the lid and let that cook. When it's all finished cooking, we're gonna come back, taste it, and see if we need to add more Maggie and then we put paprika on here. We've whisked up the egg we've got our egg brush ready to go we've got a pastry lined out so when we use this pastry we're gonna fold over so like a you know like a sausage roll you want to fold it over put your things in the middle fold it over so I'm estimating that we'll be able to make two rows of fish rolls so I'm gonna have like that amount in there fold it over cut it in half and then push everything together but you're gonna still join me on that okay hey guys welcome back you didn't really leave me did you <laughs> anyway so now i'm checking to see which potatoes are cooked as you can see some of them are a bit hard still that's why we're checking to make sure we don't have crunchy potatoes in our food so you go around make sure you press down all the fish some people will say, oh, you should have added the fish in afterwards. But you need to cook everything together. You don't want to be using like three different pots to cook things. It's a one pot dish, mate. <laughs> you can't be coming here asking me to be washing three pans, three, three spoons, all of that thing. No, 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 no. Everybody's in here. So what you just do, you just keep staring it around, checking. And this is my fault as well because some of the potatoes are probably bigger than the others so you have to just keep checking so now we know everything's in here it's gonna start it's gonna continue cooking so what we just want to do is add some of our paprika i love smoked paprika oh it's just a best delicious i love paprika and everything not everything you know what beans 
things that are like solid food that will hold the flavour of the smoked paprika. But I find it tastes well in beans and in potato. Like if you're frying potato, you can add a bit of paprika to it and a bit of sea salt. Mm. I love it. So yeah. So now we're going to let that cook down a little bit more. And if you feel that you need to add another Maggie cube into this, you can. If you feel that you need to add a bit of salt, you can. It's all up to you. And the thing is, we haven't added any pepper to this at this point in time. I want to do that later on. I want to add um, dry peppers to it. I don't want to add heavy peppers. So what I mean by dry peppers is my mixed peppers. It's got uh, green, black and white in there and red in there. I'm going to gr uh, grind that into this when it's nearly done because it's already cooked. Okay. And if you feel like your potatoes are still a bit hard, add like about two tablespoons of water into the middle and cover it and let it steam. But if you just continue cooking it on low heat every, with a lid on, everything will turn out fine. Okay. So guys, um, mixture is fully cooked and it is still hot as you can see. This is the part that you need to let it cool down. You've got to be patient and let it cool. It'll take a few minutes to cook. Cool down, not cook. And then you can put it in your pastry. You've got your egg mixture already bat uh, beaten and ready to go. But now you can put away your ingredients. You don't need any more paprika. You don't need any more maggi. So all you need is these two things and a baking tray. And it goes into the oven for 45 minutes. Okay, but I'll show you that as well. And everything will be listed at the bottom, the ingredient, the timing, the preparation, everything will be listed down there. But it depends on you, on how long it takes for you to prep, get everything out. But I'll give you my rough timing and you can go from there. Okay. Hi guys. So we've got our mixture with fish, sea bass, mackerel, potato carrots, onion, one Maggi cube, two shake of smoked paprika and we also have the seafood seasoning inside and what else do we have in there? That's it! Simple ingredient right? And then we've got our pastry, it's nice and warm and ready to work with. We've got an oiled pan and we've got a beaten egg, okay? I would suggest when you have cooked your filling, that's when you take your pastry out so it's room temperature ready to go, okay? We're gonna fill this in, we're gonna roll it up and we're gonna cut it and then we're gonna egg it, then we're gonna put it in the oven. I've got the oven going, as you can hear in the background, it's warm and ready to go. So always do that. Don't just put it straight into the oven, turn on the heat. Pre-warm your oven. It's always good to do that, okay? It gives it a nice environment to walk into. It's like, think about it in the way that you come in from the cold. You don't want to just come into the cold and just try to warm up. You want the house to be slightly warm for you and then you start mellowing in, okay? Anyway, guys, let's get this filling on. Okay, guys, so we've got our filling in. Just remember that you put it on the edge, just close to the edge so you have enough space to fold over. I rolled down the middle to cut the pastry in half, okay? You don't always have to put the filling all in. If it doesn't fit in, it doesn't fit in. Don't don't stress it. Don't push yourself. All right, the one thing I want to say is I have long nails. These are my nails. I have really long nails, so I have to be careful when I do the pastry. And I always have to keep washing my hands because you get all the debris, everything stuck in with the stuck underneath the nail. Mm, that's not a good look. Nobody wants to be eating crap. Anyway, so I always wash my nails. So be very careful to keep washing your hands if you've got long nails. And if you don't have no nails, that's good. <laughs> but when you do, be careful and be careful how you handle the pastry as well. You don't want to be poking whole. And places that you don't need okay so we're now we're gonna egg wash the edges and then we're gonna fold it over okay one day I'm gonna get a tripod and we can do this standing let's 
move it closer. Move out of the way. Okay. So we're egg washing basically so everything can stick together. When we don't have issues, okay. You can use different fillings, you can use crab meats, you can use chicken, that would be a chicken roll. You can use any filling you want, even with this, you don't even need to add. Um, how would you say? You don't even need to add the fish if you're vegetarian, just minus the Maggi cubes, use veggie stock, and then use the same vegetable you've put in this as well okay so everything's egg wash we're now gonna fold everything over so i'm gonna do this off camera and come back okay okay guys this is it you can see we have a few nail hook marks here so that's why you have to be careful you also have to be careful to make sure your filling is nice and cool down so you don't melt the pastry and it becomes too hot to handle when the pastry is not cooked. So now we're going to use a pizza cutter and roll up in the middle and try to get a nice even cut. So here we go. It's up to you how big you want it or how small you want it. Okay. pizza cut is a perfect way to cut it rather than um, a knife. The pizza cut rolls and glides all over it rather than a knife you've got to be working extra hard to do things. Okay. Remember don't overfill the pastry, don't underfill it. All right, holes, just small holes, nothing major because the bottom, the sides are not sealed, so you're good. Just a small, just to help the pastry to breathe. Okay. Egg wash. That will help to give it a nice golden sheer, and it will just burn. We egg wash every bit, the top side. As you can see, the pastry comes with um, a sheet underneath it. You can transfer that straight from the tray, from this straight onto your baking tray, or you can grease it like I've done and then transfer it individually and space it out. All right, everything is good to go. We egg wash, we're on the tray that is nicely oiled up and we're gonna go straight into the oven. Da -da -da -da. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this and see how it comes out. So make sure you keep an eye on it, check on it every few minutes. Not every few minutes, like every 10 minutes, check on it to make sure it's nice and golden and it's looking beautiful. All right, guys, next time when we see each other, it's going to be ready to eat. Can't wait. Yeah. Okay, guys, this is a side note. These are the ingredients that we have left over. What are you thinking? Throw it away. Put it in the fridge. Use it another time. No. Put egg in, the egg that you've got left over onto this. Mix it around. Put it on the frying pan. Cook it nice and slow. And then what you do is you put a small plate or plate of equal size on top of the frying pan flip it over and then slide it back into the frying pan and then cook it on the other side slowly as well and there you go you have a frittata it's not a lot but it's something you know you can add another egg to it if you'd like but that's something okay guys it's done our fish pies are Shall I say fish rows are done. It's nice and golden. I want to touch it so badly. Oh, it's going to be hot. There we go. Look at that. It's nicely golden and fully stuffed.
I would like to bite into it, but that's going to be a no because it's super hot. So remember guys, simple ingredients can create such a beautiful meal, a snack. Come and join me. Wow. Yeah. <music>